Texas will build a border wall in our state to help secure our border. Homes are being invaded. Neighborhoods are dangerous and people are being threatened on a daily basis. I told you that Texas would step up and respond. Today, we begin that response. And that was Governor Greg Abbott pledging to finish what Donald Trump started by building the wall in Texas along the Texas southern border. A Lone Star State, the Lone Star State will use a combination of government funds and public donations to help secure the border. But can Governor Abbott actually do this? He says he's going to go into a, a, a fund for the state fund and get $250 million out. Here with Moore's Texas Land Commissioner and candidate for Texas Attorney General George P. Bush. I know you know the uh, legal immigration is a huge issue, maybe worse than any time in your lifetime. But if w is what the governor doing just political theater or can he actually do this? This is a matter of national security, but of state concern. Texas has absorbed the cost of illegal immigration for generations. But with the largest surge of illegal immigration in modern American history, our communities are absorbing that much more. And so the governor is absolutely right to say that we're going to complete the Trump wall. And as commissioner of the general land office, I'm announcing on your program that we will be contributing state lands as part of the development of this wall. Uh, President Trump um, was right in saying that we need this element of our national security. And uh, this is having a dramatic impact not only in Texas communities, but throughout the country. When you look at the draining of resources and the potential impact of what it means for uh, freedom in our country. So that's interesting, George. So where would this land be and where is the state land as it relates to the border? So the General Land Office manages over 250,000 acres within 50 miles of a border area. One tract alone, about 700 acres in Rio Grande City and Star County, has witnessed 1,500 on average migrants coming through on a daily basis. Our lessee, which is a cotton farmer, has had his business destroyed, and so we are considering legal action at this time. But we want to work with the governor, with other leaders that are willing to do it, law enforcement officials, to make sure that we're securing our border and keeping our community safe. Is, does the gov is the governor allowed to use this money for that? Absolutely. So this is within state discretionary dollars. It's within his executive authority. He has claimed uh, executive action to do this on behalf of the people of Texas. Right. And I have executive authority as the commissioner of the land office to contribute lands. And I know that private landowners will be a part of this. There will also be private donations. I expect to come from all over the country because Americans know that enough is enough. We have to secure our borders. We have to back the thin green line. Only 18,000 agents protecting over 2,000 miles of our U.S.-Mexican border with almost 180,000 apprehensions last month alone. So this is a, a crisis. And we need, right. if the federal government's not going to do their job, Texas is going to do it for them. And it's so interesting that other uh, states like Florida are pledging their National Guard to help out. All hands on deck, I guess, if you're a Republican governor. So this story, I know you can re resonates with you especially. I know you're revamping the whole Alamo site to make sure it lasts another 200 years. But guess what? There's a book out that was picked up by the New York Times. They want to rewrite the story. Here's an excerpt from the book that's out. It basically says, forget the Alamo. A quote. We've been telling the Alamo story wrong for nearly 200 years. Now it's time to correct the record. Among the things they say is Davy Crockett didn't die uh, fighting to the last breath, that William Travis should have gotten out a long time ago, uh, that this was a land that belonged to Mexico, and uh, we were not on the right side of history there. I wrote Sam Houston, the Alamo Avengers. We could go into detail. Your thought on this book and the traction it's getting? Well, woke culture has arrived to the shores of Texas, and the Alamo is not an exception to the rewriting of this history and this dangerous doctrine that we're seeing in uh, universities and also K through 12 systems throughout our country. And sadly, it's brought its um, revisionist history to Texas. And so I stand with Alamo descendants. I stand with other Texans that believe that the revolutionaries fought and gave that last ultimate measure on the grounds of the Alamo for the idea of liberty to liberate the, the Republic of Texas from a fierce and vicious tyranny in the govern government of Mexico. Uh, as a military veteran myself, I've gone to several commissionings on the grounds of the Alamo. I bring my boys anytime I can on Veterans Day. And I think about the sacrifice of not only U.S. soldiers, but Texas revolutionaries that gave the ultimate measure. Your book 
is definitely an accurate portrayal. And I know Texans would honor their revolutionaries uh, and will continue to do so. Yeah, go on Fox Nation. You helped us out with that. You were very kind. We had scale models. And believe me, they're just trying to blow up American history. This is just the latest example. And finally, you're running for attorney general. But Matthew McConaughey is seriously considering by m multiple accounts of running for governor. Among the people that think he should or think he would be a viable candidate, Ted Cruz, listen. Let me close with a tough question. Matthew McConaughey is considering running for governor. Would he be a formidable candidate for Greg Abbott? And why would he be if he if you indeed conclude that he is? Yeah, so I, I think he would undoubtedly be formidable. I, I, I hope Matthew decides not to run. He's a movie star and, and, and a good looking, charming, affable movie star can be a really formidable uh, candidate on the ballot. And, and, and I hope that doesn't happen. So that's a big name in Texas, the senator. You're the land commissioner with a big name, George P. Bush. Is Matthew McConaughey a formidable candidate? You know, perhaps, but I'm not sure Texans really know what his positions are. And when you get in the arena of politics and you're under the lights, you've got to take some tough uh, positions and you've got to make some tough choices. And we haven't seen that from, from Matthew, so maybe he needs to still think about what he's going to do in his next step. Right. So do you think if he does jump in that his polling will remain high or is it going to be about performance, not his movies? You know, honestly, as conservatives, we have a great record. This was the most conservative legislative session that we've had in, in recent history. And Texas constituents are happy to push back on the Biden agenda. That's the focus right now. And, and any Republican that steps forward and offers those ideas is going to do well in November of 22. Gotcha. Yeah, that's right. We do not know what party he'll be in. Uh, George P. Bush, land commissioner, wants to be the next attorney general, maybe meeting up with President Trump when he goes to the border. Thanks so much for joining us today.